Hi, I'm Alan Murdoch. For the past 20 years, I've been buying, fixing, and selling properties right here in Southern Arizona. And I wanna buy your property. Whether it's a house, apartment, commercial building, or vacant land, regardless of the condition or the situation, I wanna to talk to you. When you sell to me, I pay cash and it's hassle-free. No repairs, no closing costs, and no commissions. If you have a property you don't wanna deal with and you want a quick solution, call, text, or visit SellToAllen.com. Again, that's SellToAllen.com. Discover the power of 88 Crime, where your anonymous tips are rewarded with cash. When you call in anonymously with a tip, you are given a code. With the code and a password, you can walk into a bank and redeem your reward anonymously. If your anonymous tip results in a felony arrest, you can claim up to $2,500 cash reward. Let's stop the silence on crime and strive for a safer community. For more information, please visit 88crime.org or call 88crime. Copper Creek Cookies, Copper Creek Cookies, Copper Creek Cookies.net. We can print anything on our soft vanilla logo cookies. We deliver them and other sweet treats locally. We are located at 4249 West Ina Road, Suite 121. Call us, 520-300-1131. We bake smiles. Copper Creek Cookies, Copper Creek Cookies, Copper Creek Cookies.net. All right, good morning and welcome to Southwest Flavor. I'm your host, Ron Arenas. Thank you. Thank you for uh, joining us for another week. And this week we have a guest and a friend and a Tucson High Badger, Steve Nunez. Tucson High Badgers, yeah. 85, baby. Yeah. Class of. Class of 85. 85. <laughs> I'm dating myself, man. <laughs> I'm class of 90, so I'm man, right I'm behind you. Old. Oh, just a long ways behind. Not that far. <laughs> In this stage of our life, five years is, yeah, is yeah, nothing. Right? Because yeah. once you hit 50, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You feel all the aches and pains. Oh, and, yeah. And all those old injuries from high school yeah. when you play sports. When now you're all invincible. Sudden, right? <laughs> <laughs> like Mike Tyson taught us, man, yeah. it sucks getting old. Yeah. You know, his brain he was, looks good. He, he looked but, good, but his brain was saying, I'm 20, but his punches were saying, I'm 58. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and everyone true. was was complaining about the streaming issues with Netflix. Yeah. And I was like, wait a second. The same punch I saw him throw in the first round mm -hmm. or start to throw, and then the screen fr froze up. Right. I still saw it in the eighth round land. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. So what's so, going on with you, man? So what's going on with me, man? Just uh, busy as ever. We have our weekly podcast. I have a weekly radio show, The Guys Next Door. Um, running picture rocks, cooling, heating, and plumbing. Just trying to serve the community out there. And how do you have so much time? I'm kind of flipping the switch because I'm going somewhere with this. Okay, sure. All right. How do you have so much time to do all that you're doing right man, now? Man, I, I don't. Because you do the radio I, I show just, too. Yeah, yeah, I do the radio show too. I... um. Man, I just get up really early in the morning. I try to get as much work done as I can. I, I say that I usually get more work done by 8 a.m. than most people get done in their whole day. Good for you. Yeah. And what's the secret to that really quick? Motivation, I guess. Just uh, I just want to get it done. Yeah. You know, I, I'm, I've always been a list person, so if there's things I need to do, I'll kind of make a list, and, and it feels good to cross them off once they're done. So Yeah. Well, congratulations. Yeah. And congratulations. Here's where I'm going with this. Okay. On riding in El Tour de Tucson. Well, thank you. Thank you. It was my third time. My third, third ride. time. Yeah. How many miles did you do? We're doing the 32. I, I'm, we're pretty oh, just sure. just the 32? Just the 32. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're pretty sure next year we'll do the 63. Oh, yeah. nice. And so it's a team? Yeah. Picture Rocks? Uh, Picture Rocks and Lady Baba does promo. So it's oh. Jeff and I. Yeah. So 
obviously there's a lot of tradition with El Tour. Yeah, 41st the week before year. Thanksgiving, yeah. which I'm sure allows you to eat a little bit more on Thursday, right? Right. <laughs> well, I'll definitely be riding this week just to get some miles in and burn some calories. But what's it like riding in El Tour? Knowing the tradition, knowing yeah. the history, knowing that 10,000 people are riding in this annual tradition that has grown into such a big massive. event, yeah. not only for economically for Tucson, right. but just a cultural event and tradition for Tucson. Right. What's it like riding knowing that every state is represented by someone yeah. who's riding in it right. in 13 countries? Yeah. I mean, it's amazing. So how do you feel when you're riding? I mean, is it competition? Is it just a personal journey and something that you are personally trying to achieve or have a mission to for something else or a cause or something yeah, like that? Yeah, uh, yes to everything. Yeah? I mean, the first first year, three years ago, um, it was on my bucket list. Um, I had COVID really bad three years ago, yeah, in 21. Um, mm-hmm. And I'd always wanted to ride in the El Tour. So in 22, I'm like, I'm, I'm just going to ride no matter what. And it took a lot. It took about 11 months after COVID to get my lungs back. Really? Yeah. Yeah, so wow. I was riding. I was riding for like four months and just really struggling. Gassy and then now, it huh? just seemed like one day I rode, you know, we rode 25, 30 miles. I'm like, hmm, I feel pretty good. I'm not, you know, I can actually breathe. Yeah. So, and that first year, um, just the adrenaline, just being in the middle of a crowd of 2,000 other cyclists and just doing the race, that was just, you know, it was amazing. And now it's, it's, um, of course, we're competitive. I want to beat my time from the year before. Mm-hmm. Um, just want to keep losing weight. Just, you know, I'm in my 50s now. So it's like, hey, I want to do this every year possible. I'd like to be that 80 year old guy that's out there doing it. All right. Put that yeah. on your bucket list. Yeah, definitely. We're going to we're going to call the news media in 40 years from now, 30 <laughs> years from now. <laughs> right. Ron is going to be riding in the L yeah. Tour. Nice. Good for you. Yeah. Yeah. But like you said, there's every state rep- is represented. Um, we and stand, 13 countries. And 13 countries. Yeah. We stand in line either the day before or two days before the race to get our packet. There's always someone that we meet that's, you know, from another, another How state. How interesting at least. is it to meet people from other states that are coming here and just like not only pouring money into the economy, but just they have a mission too. Yeah. They have a story to tell. Of course. Yeah. They could be writing for their, their brother or their dad or their mom or their, their sister or their wife. You know, they can be writing for someone that's sick or maybe someone um, in remembrance. Yeah. So, yeah, it's great. So I've never ridden in the El Tour. That's okay. But you're inspiring me. Maybe now I'll do that. <laughs> right? I'll try. Yeah. We've had On a team. On my low rider bike. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we've had a team of about 30. It is down to about probably 10 or 12 this year. Is there a strategy but, that you guys follow? Like you, no, we, you have a certain, you know, pecking order, so to speak, and you challenge each other or speed each other up not, or down? Not really. In fact, no? some of our team actually rides the other miles of the race. Some of them ride the 100, some of them ride the 63, and then most of us ride the 32. Wow, those go-getters? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How dare them? Yeah, but a few of them are half our age. Oh, okay. So, and it's kind of so cool. they can to, do the 100. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of cool to train with those guys. Because, yeah. I mean, you know in your head that they're half your age, but you're still trying to at least keep up with them. So now you know what Mike Tyson felt like in the ring yeah. against Jake Paul. Oh, half yeah. his age, man. <laughs> <laughs> just you're pedaling. You're just pedaling, yep. <laughs> yep. But we raise money for, for nonprofits every year. I was going to ask that. Yep. So we, we pick uh, two nonprofits every year. And we raise money for them. We get sponsors. We Which put their sponsors. Profits? This year, it was uh, the United Way of Southern Arizona, and We Care Tucson. Nice. Yeah. Hopefully next year, it's Miracle in El Barrio. Yeah. 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 My nonprofit. Yep. Well, let's talk about your nonprofit, because it's coming up. The big event's coming up. The big event is coming up. Miracle in El Barrio is coming up on Saturday, December 21st okay. at St. John's Church on the south side, 12th Avenue in Ajo, mm-hmm. from 8 a.m. to about noonish. And Santa arrives just before 8. Oh, okay. And, uh, we have uh, mariachi kids from Davis oh, really? Bilingual. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. They come in yeah. and they serenade Santa, walk him into his chair hmm. where he sits down. And then the kids just start coming in. Okay. So it's an amazing event. Miracle has grown into 
Tucson's largest Christmas toy giveaway event. Wow. And how long have you been doing this? This is now 22 years. Wow. It's amazing. amazing. Yeah. It's, oh, it's grown from, you know, 500 toys. You know, John Volpe that I started mm, okay. Miracle 21 years ago. This twenty year 22. Okay. That first year, we had no idea what to expect. Yeah. And uh, ran out of toys. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> John gave me his credit card, went to the CVS and just emptied out their shelves with to- from toys. Wow. And pushed baskets across the parking lot and yeah. made sure every child got a toy. Okay. And from that point on, we knew, you know. Yeah. We, it was a hit. It was, yeah. Yeah. The, the, there was a necessity. But there was exactly. A there's that need for you it. Know? But I was inspired by Miracle when I was a reporter mm-hmm. at Kega 9. Every year, I'd cover a story. Right. And the story involved an old man named Ramon Gonzalez hmm. who lived on the south side near Pueblo High School. Okay. And... He had an event called Miracle on 34th Street. Oh, okay. And every year he struggled to collect enough toys to be able to fill the need in the community in that area. And then after the news coverage, by some miracle, he'd get enough toys. Ah. And then he'd open up his his front door, literally, Uh in front of his yard, the street, and he just started giving away toys to the kids in the neighborhood. Wow. And it just grew and grew and grew. You know, Silver Saddle got mm-hmm. involved, started feeding the kids. South Tucson police would block it off and make sure the kids were safe. Oh, Others okay. started to get involved. So me watching this and covering it as a news reporter, it hit me. Yeah. You know, it hit me personally because I'm not saying every year in my life it was a struggle. But a lot of years mm. in my childhood, sure, I I, I could relate. Yeah. I knew that feeling of waking up and not having a toy. Mm. It was about food, yeah, not toys. Yeah, and of so, course, yeah, your parents have to make a, a choice. Absolutely, yeah. And so that's when I became inspired by it. Okay, to start Miracle, that I wanted to make sure that. I did everything within my power to make sure no child goes without on Christmas. Wow. You know, and that's where we're at today. We, um, we have given toys to more than 42,000 kids over the last 21 years. Hmm. We average about 2,000 kids. Wow. Okay. And the way we've created Miracle, it, you know, except for this year, we're now a nonprofit. Right. I turned it into a nonprofit. But prior, it was all about, hey, man... Let's all come together. We were able to make it. Mm -hmm. Let's put money in the cookie jar and let's go buy toys. You know, let's let's fundraise. Let's get the community involved. Let's utilize our partnerships and our expertise to create partners with business owners who share our same mission. Sure. You know, because everyone has a story. Yeah. And we don't know what that story is. But I guarantee you the majority of business owners went through struggles in their life. And that's what. Oh, yeah. That's what elevated them. But that's what motivated them to be successful. Right. They overcame it. Overcame so many obstacles. And most business owners have because that's why they're resilient. Yeah. That's why they're tenacious. Yeah, it takes a lot. It takes a lot. Yeah. And you got to know that struggle to be able to overcome that struggle. Yeah. You really do. So I commend you for that because oh, you, you built a great, great business and you're all over the place and you're doing all these things. And now you you said your son is running 80% of, the, yeah. of your business. Yeah. He because is. you built that. You know that struggle. But now he's taking over that. Yeah. And he's doing That's, a great job. Yeah. He is. Because you're able to be here. Yeah. <laughs> On a it's Tuesday true. morning. It's true. You yeah. know? And so it's all about that. It's about community. I mean, we could not do it. You, I know the cliche, it takes a village. Yeah. It really does it take does. a village yeah. because Chick-fil-A, El Con Mall, mm-hmm. no questions asked. Oh, okay. All I do is meet with him once a year. Yeah. And I say, Matt, he's like, what do you need? <laughs> I'm like, man, 1,500 mils. Please, bro, wow. check it out. And he's like, done. No questions Fantastic. asked. Fantastic, yeah. And the way I met Matt, it's a funny story. Yeah? Yeah. So I used to host tailgates at the U of A. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Hence, yeah. I'm a diehard wild Yeah. Kid. 
So am I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are. Yeah. We're two Sonins, man. Yep. Uh, so I used to host tailgates in one year. You know, I, I always used to grill at my tailgates, oh, okay. but it's my chicken. Yeah. I, I like to call it my flavorful Mexican chicken ah, okay. that only I can grill. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, some friends came to my tailgate, including this tall kid, mm -hmm. younger kid, you know, um, obviously a, a, a grown man, but young. Okay. You yeah. know, much younger than all of us. Right. And he had a southern accent, oh. huh. <laughs> you know, from Georgia. Yeah. And so he joined us, and I just welcomed him in, and I'm just like, man, drink up. You're in Tucson. This yeah. is how we roll, wildcat country. That's right. Forget you bulldogs, you know. <laughs> He's like, no, no, no. And so I'm grilling. And I'm, I'm giving him chicken. I'm like, this is how we roll in Tucson, baby. Yeah. You know, and he's like, wow, this is good. Mm. So we were having a good time. And he said, you know what? I also have chicken. You know, I, I have my specialty chicken. I'll bring it to the next tailgate and I'll feed everybody. Thank you for welcoming me. Wow. And I was like, cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You're on, brother. <laughs> <laughs> next tailgate, he shows up with one of those catering um, yeah. Things that keep everything warm, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, I, yeah, I the, know, the warmers the, or the what, warmers, yeah. whatever mm -hmm. they're called. I'm like, man, what is this? Chick-fil-A? <laughs> <laughs> you cheated me, man. And he's like, no, I own Chick-fil-A, El Con Mall. Wow. And I was like, oh, my brother. So we're eating <laughs> sandwiches. Right. Galore. And people were coming from other tailgates getting some because he brought so many. Oh, wow. But we had a really good time. And then ever since I went to him and I said, I think I could use you. You think you can help me feed the kids for miracle? Yeah. Boom. Done. Wow. Ever since. And I mean, we're talking 1,500 meals. Wow. That, yeah, that's a Chicken lot. Chicken nugget that's meals. That's a lot. You know, the kids meals. Right. And a bag of potato chips to keep it simple. Okay. You know, and then Peter Piper Pizza comes in. They give the kids uh, bounce back coupons to get a pizza, uh -huh. which is, a, you know, the kids pizza, which is really important because... Yeah. When school is out, mm -hmm. they have to feed they the kids. To, they, yeah. they, the kids need to eat because they're not eating at school. Yeah. And so that coupon is, is valuable as heck. Right. EG's Day Of gives all the kids EG's. Oh, okay. So what I'm going with this is to show you, look at the competing businesses. Yeah. But they check their egos at the oh, door yeah. because they know that we're giving back to the kids, that right. they're giving back to the kids, that they share in the mission. And there is no competition. Right. It's all about giving back to the kids. But they see the kids because they're there. Yeah. They see the smiles. They see the need. And, you know, obviously it, it just makes all of them feel good to the point where there's no stopping it now. Yeah. You know, I have Pioneer Title who gives the kids um, candy bags. And I'm talking legit candy bags, like yeah. big Snickers. <laughs> oh, you know okay. how much big Snickers are today, man? <laughs> yeah. It's not like when we were it's, kids. It's no. Not, it's not a quarter no. like when I was a kid, yeah. man. Uh, <laughs> these are legit freaking candy bags. Wow. You know? And then General Dentistry for Kids gives all the kids a... Uh, hygiene kit. You oh, know? okay. And then on Sonoran uh, foot and ankle, they give the kids little little monitos, little things, and but they're also um, really giving the parents mm. valuable information because you know diabetes runs really high uh. in the Hispanic Latino mm. Native American yeah. population, which is yeah the community we serve. Right, right. You know, then you have Santa. You know, the toys that we give and Santa gets to give them out and the kids just, they see Santa and they're always pulling at his beard. <laughs> and he's legit. Yeah. He's legit. He has the real beard? Real beard, okay. everything. And so when they see that and they do that, you know, pull at his beard yeah. and it doesn't snap back off. Right. <laughs> <laughs> or snap back and hit him on his chin. Yeah. They're like, their eyes just grow and they're like, whoa, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then it becomes, it's done deal. They're wow. sold on, on all of that. <clears throat> and then Pyramid Federal Credit Union uh, gives kids um, little piggy banks and, and uh, oh, bags okay. and, and just also helps the parents understand yeah. there's there's availability here for financing. You right. know? Um, Sunnyside Unified School District gives all the kids information, their parents really. Um, and the reason is because, especially like during COVID, mm -hmm. when kids were struggling to find internet service, 
Oh, you know, okay. And going to the Walmart or McDonald's, hanging out outside, trying to get internet, just so that so they could they, go to class, just so on, that they online. could finish class yeah. online. You know, it, it really started with that because we saw that need. Yeah. At that time, you know, and so now we're just giving them information so that wow. over the holidays they know there's support still there. Hmm. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's 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 amazing when yeah. <laughs> when you put these events on, you get to see the real need, right? And and the little things you never think about, yeah, are things you have to address and think about. Wow, yeah. You know? And then um, La Frontera helps me with the uh, holiday bags. Okay. So we do these holiday bags with oranges and nuts. Oh, nice. And candy. So it's it's it has it's some healthy great, stuff in there too. Yeah, absolutely. You know, but. A lot of candy canes, too, you know, because the kids want candy canes. Sure, of you know? course, they're kids. Yeah, they're kids, man. Yeah. They want that Christmas spirit. Right. My goal is to get those. Remember? Well, we remember. <laughs> yeah, I know you yeah. remember. Remember the uh, ribbon candies that would oh, last? Oh, yeah. The, the Christmas ribbon candies yeah. that would last like 10 hours? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's my goal. All That's right. That's my goal is to get that. Well, with that, we're going to go a commercial break, and then we'll be right back with Southwest Flavor. My heat and air work. Hi, I'm Alan Murdoch. For the past 20 years, I've been buying, fixing, and selling properties right here in Southern Arizona. And I want to buy your property. Whether it's a house, apartment, commercial building, or vacant land, regardless of the condition or the situation, I want to talk to you. When you sell to me, I pay cash and it's hassle-free. No repairs, no closing costs, and no commissions. If you have a property you don't want to deal with and you want a quick solution, call, text, or visit SellTalon.com. Again, that's SellTalon.com. Discover the power of 88 Crime, where your anonymous tips are rewarded with cash. When you call in anonymously with the tip, you are given a code. With the code and a password, you can walk into a bank and redeem your reward anonymously. If your anonymous tip results in a felony arrest, you can claim up to $2,500 cash reward. Let's stop the silence on crime and strive for a safer community. For more information, please visit 88crime.org or call 88 Crime. Copper Creek Cookies, Copper Creek Cookies, Copper Creek Cookies.net. We can print anything on our soft vanilla logo cookies. We deliver them and other sweet treats locally. We are located at 4249 West Ina Road, Suite 121. Call us, 520-300-1131. We bake smiles. Copper Creek Cookies, Copper Creek Cookies, Copper Creek Cookies.net. Welcome back to Southwest Flavor and happy Tuesday. If you'd like to join in in the conversation with Steve and I, give us a call. The uh, phone number is here on the screen. So give us a call and you can join the conversation with us. We're talking right now with Steve Nunez with Miracle in El Barrio. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for having me, man. Yeah. I really it's, appreciate It's a pleasure. This. Yeah. I'm so glad we get to connect again. It's always fun. It's it's always fun and it's it's so funny how life comes full circle. Yeah. You never know. I mean, right. like, we're sitting in here talking, and a little young blood, I'm staring at him. I'm like, I know you, man. <laughs> right. He's like, how do you know me? Yeah. <laughs> I know your parents. I went to school with them. Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, Raul, right? Raul. Yeah, uh -huh. Raul. Yep. And, and yeah, he's I've running seen pictures a board today. of him since he was a little guy, man. Oh, wow. You know, pictures of him on Facebook. Yeah. You know, his parents would post and everything, but I've known his dad, Aggie, and his mom. Since Edie, Tucson High, Since right? Tucson High wow. days, you know, and we've always connected in the community. Yeah. You know, and so. That's awesome. It, great people, It's man. like with great, my youngest son. People. My youngest son is out there. He's working for us also. I have three sons. Two of them are working with me, and uh, my youngest son will go to someone's house, and they'll be like, I know your dad. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, how did you know that, you know, it's my dad? Yeah. <laughs> they're like, I just. Yeah. Resemblance. Yeah, yeah. 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 People <laughs> always say that. You know, my mom used to say, I think I know that, that kid you're going to school with. Does, does, 
he have a mom named and sure yeah. enough. Yeah. I'm like, how the heck did you, I'm like, how does this happen right. now that I'm older? Yeah. <laughs> I can it see happens. it now. And so, yeah. Like Raul. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yep. Raulito, I think they used to call him. <laughs> If I'm if I'm not mistaken, on okay. No one's called me that since like elementary school. Oh, oh man, no one. You said it. No one's called me that since elementary. <laughs> well, see how long I've been following your parents on Facebook, bro. Wow. Chato. My dad. My dad just says what's up. By the way, I just texted that you were in the studio. So Augie says nice. what's up. Tell Augie I said what up, bro. Yep. Chacho. <laughs> but Tucson High so still has that small town feel. It really does. You know, as big as Tucson High has become, it yeah. does. Yeah. Because I think we all bond with the fact that we, in many ways, especially years ago, going to Tucson High was, you got a chip on your shoulder because yeah. we were always the underdog. Yeah. We yeah. were the underdogs. We, we were the kids that were not supposed to make it. They're right. In many ways. In we many ways. We were the troubled or yeah. the, the, the kids who caused trouble. Yeah. You know, they we're going to Tucson High. Oh, God, you better get security or whatever. Right. Yeah. Always. Yeah. You know, and so. There's many I kids we, I went to school with that didn't make it. it there were. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and that's a sad reality. But for those of us who did, we had to overcome those those obstacles, those perceptions right. of we wouldn't make it. Yeah. And. Yet there's so many of us who have. Sure. Yeah. You know? The so, majority of us did. So Definitely. It, built, it built it built a camaraderie. It yeah. built a little community where we could all relate because yeah. we know, you yep. know. And then back then, you know, there used to be a lot of gang fights and oh, yeah. race wars and, and, yeah. and all of that. And so I think we, we bonded over the years to understand we're all good. Yeah. We're not bad or the, what the perception says we are. Right. So... Yeah. We made it. We made it, man. <laughs> and that's what it's all about. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You go through life struggles, but you can definitely you just keep going forward and you can make it. Yeah. You know, and, and um, man, I, I'm just blessed because I, I feel like, you know, for me personally, I had to overcome a lot. Mm. And, you know, I, I try to, going back to Miracle, Yeah, I try to instill that in these kids that go to Miracle. Right. Because I want them to know that it's not just about a toy. Yeah. Some or many may not need a toy for Christmas. Right. But that's not for me to judge. Right. Yeah, exactly. You know, my job, my mission, my God-given why is to give toys. Right. To all the children. Because if one doesn't need a toy... They might need the gift of love. Yeah. And, and that hope. gift of love yeah. builds hope. Yeah. And hope builds opportunity for them to right. dream so they can achieve. Because then they know somebody believes in them. Yeah. And there's no more powerful thing than, you know, like us going to Tucson High or just having hope yeah. that somebody believes in you. When somebody believes in you, you really overachieve. You really excel. You sure. really do something in your life that... You didn't think you could do, you know, it's, it's just like us, what we do today. It's like you and your mission, bucket list, yeah. riding in El Tour de Tucson yeah. because you wanted to overcome the COVID. You yeah. want to get your, your, your strength back, your health back. Right. But it became a personal vendetta for you to achieve that. Sure. And so that comes with hope. Yeah. That comes with experience and, and, and so many hopes in your life that are given to you. All of a sudden you believe in yourself and you can achieve. Yeah. And so that's what we do with miracle <clears throat> we're not just giving toys right we're giving love because love will build that hope because that kid may not need a toy but that's what they need is just that that hope that love and somebody who believes in them and then let it be yeah you know hopefully they go out and they achieve um greater things and understand that um giving and giving back to your community yeah. is important. That's huge. When I and started my business, I mean, that was one of the pillars was to give back to the community. And, of course, we couldn't do it in the beginning, in the very beginning, because we just didn't have, yeah. you know, anything to give. I mean, we gave time, but now we can give. But it's an investment. It's a it, long-term it's an investment. investment. Yeah. And, as, and, and now that you're getting there to that point, the fact of the matter is you are giving now. Right. We do. We, you know, know, that's, and for that's our part of our... Tucson, you gave to two charities. Right. You know, you, you, you 
you know, yeah. And we were raced with, in, in, we, in, in, in El Tour. You rode in the El Tour. Yeah. But it was about not only just for you, it was every pedal was making money or giving money yeah. to a charity, which is important. It is. Yeah. And every month we work with Interfaith Community Services and do their nice. food handout. So, yeah. And it feels good. It does. It, it does. Feels I good. have my management team out there, and we all go out there uh, early morning. You know, it's it's cooler because it's during the cooler times of the year. But yeah, yeah, it's fun. You know, giving the toys to the kids, man. It it kind of lasts almost the entire year. Yeah, from December to almost December. Right. Then I get that itch. You get where pumped I, up. Yeah, yeah I, get, I get that itch where I'm just like, all right, we gotta get ready. <laughs> I need this adrenaline rush again to yep. give. You know, yep. and I start building and building and building, and then boom. And then it's like an adrenaline high just comes down after right. Christmas. Yeah. And it's like, oh, all right, what do I do next year? All right, I'll <laughs> chill right now. <laughs> right. I'll take a little break and enjoy yeah. the new year. And then it's back to the grind of building back up to where I need to be. Of course. Yeah. <clears throat> and you have a toy, toy drive coming up soon before that, right? Over at Tucson Pack and Ship? Yes. Tucson Pack and Ship uh, with Will Benya. Mm-hmm. That's my boy. Oh, That's yeah. my bro, Chacho. Yep. He's such a great, great, great he person. Is. I got him he involved. Is. Last year. Okay. And uh, we just went out in the parking lot <laughs> where Little Mexico is on Irvington. Yeah, that's near 12th that's Avenue. where his office is. It, yep. He's got Estrella Insurance mm-hmm. and he's got TPS. And uh, we set up a tent, put out a box, and then we just kind of started um, luring, trying to get the attention of all the people driving by on Irvington yeah. because, I mean, that place is packed on a Saturday. Oh, yeah. I yeah. mean, a million and cars. And it's a high practic- traffic area. Yeah. A million cars go through there, and it's crazy. So we were just trying to get people to pull over, donate a dollar or mm-hmm. a toy. Sure. And then next thing I know, I'm, I'm out there, and I'm just, like, waving at people. And I turn around, and there's this man dressed in like Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Will, what? And he goes... <laughs> I figured I had to do it, wow. but you know, didn't ask him or he just surprised me, but he just, he has that heart. He does. He, yep. he truly has a heart of Santa Claus. Yeah. And he showed up out there and he's waving at people and people are honking. And I'm like, you know what? Even if they don't pull over now, maybe next year they'll remember yeah. us and they'll see what we're doing. Right. And then they'll get an interest and they'll come back. So this is a future investment. Of course. You build, yeah. you, build you build. Yeah. And so... No, he's he's great, man. And we're doing it again on Saturday, December 7th, okay. 3 to 6 p.m., okay. right there, um, Little Mexico Restaurant Plaza. Right. On Irvington. 12th and Irvington. Uh, Irvington near 12th. And uh, stop on by, donate a toy, and I'm sure you'll get, you'll get a hug from me or Will. You know what that's I mean? That's awesome. That's how, yeah. we, that's how we roll. Yeah. Yeah. So and then you... I have so many other toy drives coming up that, oh, okay. gosh, there's, you, you know, you have to keep doing toy drives yeah. and using businesses and partners to, to really help you collect toys. Right. Um, so I have, I have several. I have one with Real Properties right there on Campbell hmm. uh, in front of Allstate Insurance. Okay. Edmund Marcus. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> we have a drive-up uh, toy drive. That'll be on December 11th. Okay. Uh, all day long from 11 to oh. 6 or 7. All right. And uh, that should be special because um, it's so neat to see so many people in the in the real estate community. Yeah. That's what it's geared for. So okay. each toy dri- drive it has its own little, oh. you know, agenda, so to speak, right. or targeted audience. Yeah. On the south side, we're going to get a lot of uh, Midvale Park residents right. to give. Yeah. At this uh uh, with real properties, it's about realtors. Okay, you know, and partnering realtors. Sure. And again, it it serves what Miracle is all about. Yeah. Check your competition. These yeah. are part. These are realtors who are competing against each other, so to speak. You know. Yeah. So to speak, you know, they're 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 out there working against but each other. But a lot in many of them ways, give back to the community. They give back to the community. Yeah. And they share each other's vision and mission. Yeah. So they drive up, donate toys. I have another one with Stuart Title coming up that I just organized yesterday. Oh, okay. And that will be on the tenth. Oh, okay. In the morning, Broadway, Broadway, Alvernon, Broadway, Alvernon. Mm-hmm. Broadway and Alvernon. Yep, <clears throat> That's Bob another. Dick goes over there. Yeah, do you know Bob? I know Bob. Yeah. Okay, and Lauren Smith. Yeah, Lauren you know, Smith. Yep, and Wendy Whitehead. Yep, yep. Um, Lauren and Bob uh, uh, volunteered over at Tour de Tucson for registration. Yes, yeah, yes, they did. Yep, and uh, and so they'll be there. 
And we just have a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> Stuart Title they do <laughs> They're it good up. people. They're all They're good people. They're great people. Yeah. And we just have a really good time while we're standing there waiting for somebody to donate toys. Okay. But it's, it's, it's again, community. Yeah. It's getting everyone involved. And then I'll have a, a toy drive, um, actually, several more. Okay. Um, Fourth Avenue Street Fair. Ah, okay. I do stuff the bus. You know the big red double decker bus oh, yeah. that you see at the at tailgates. The tailgates yeah. U of eight football tailgates. Uh huh. Um, they let me use the bus and wow. And it's become a tradition. Okay. I park right in front of O'Malley's. Yeah. And people know high traffic area, but they come and see the bus. They they know what we're doing, and uh, it's just a great opportunity for me to share what Miracle is about. Okay. And share the story of Miracle. Yeah. To people who may not know the story, but then they start to get, you know, a dollar or they come back and bring toys. Right. You know, but it's, it's really about them knowing so that they understand the need and what we're doing in the community and hopefully they get involved. Yeah. And so I do that those three days. <clears throat> I just inked a partnership with cold beers and cheeseburgers. Oh, okay. On Ina and Oracle. On Ina and Oracle. Yeah. And so what they're going to do is a toy drive for me on Tuesdays in December, ah. December 3rd, December 10th, December 17th. Okay. And it's going to coincide with Kids Eat Free on Tuesdays. Oh, wow. So we're going to promote parents, yeah. come in, donate a toy. You get $5 off your meal ticket. Nice. You know, yeah. or a card for your next visit. Aha. Uh -huh. Bring but them kids back. get to eat free yeah. on Tuesdays, so we're doing that, which is a great promotion. I'm just yeah. so thankful and, and blessed that I have these relationships. You right, know, I know and they're the all GM stepping there, up. Yeah. And he he's just like, he's always helped me out whenever I needed help, and he's like, I want to do this here because he's at Cold Beers and Cheeseburgers. Yeah. Now. And so I'm like, of course, man. <laughs> you know, let's let's collaborate. Let's, let's do something. I have a meeting later on today with Cricket on the south side. Ah, okay. You know, near Pueblo High School. Mm -hmm. They want to do a community event. Okay. You know, because they heard about Miracle. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it's like all these things are just yeah, developing. It's rolling, yeah. And it's rolling because everyone sees what we're doing and the impact we're having right. on the south side. You know, yeah. they know about Miracle. Yeah. And they know that we are there. We, we, we don't walk. I mean, we walk the talk, you know, it's yeah. not just talk. Right. We're, right. I'm there. You're, you do the actual. I'm yeah. doing the actual work. Yeah. I'm out there visibly trying to, you know, raise money, collect toys. I, I made a fool of myself this past Friday I, doing my <laughs> comedy <laughs> show, <laughs> you know, but part of the shtick is for me to get up there and, you know, I'm not a comedian, but I Did, want people to laugh at me. Okay. Did you, know, you do some stand up up there? Yeah, I have to do a yeah. little bit of stand up okay. to warm up the crowd because I'm kind of, you know, funny. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was there, but I was I was at the dude game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Shame on you, man. <laughs> we we did end the comedy show early though. Oh, did you? Well, to Arizona. Yeah. <laughs> There's a reason I wear this scarf, man. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not missing the game, but we made it all work out because okay. I there was a conflict. I didn't realize it. When I scheduled it. Yeah. Because remember, we went from Pac-10, Pac-12, I mean, mm -hmm. to Big 12. Right. And so everything kind of changed. Game, everything yeah. changed. You know, the, the nights it, of, of games. It's and not the Thursday, like Saturdays it's not the anymore. Thursday, Saturday, yeah. and then the Friday. I'm like, threw me off. I'm like, yeah. wait, what? They're doing like Fridays and Mondays. Friday, and, yeah. It's yeah. just, it threw me it's off. It's different. So I, I didn't think of that. And uh, it was too late. Mm. You know. You had everything in place I already. I had everything in place. Yeah. The comedians, man, I had some great comedians. Yeah. And you know what? They all gave their time and talent. Oh, Didn't that's charge awesome. Me. They, they were like, as soon as they found out about it, Yeah. and, and my friend Priscilla Fernandez, she runs Lady Ha Ha Comedy. Oh, Lady wow. Ha Ha Comedy um, does comedy circuit downtown. Oh. You'll, see, you'll see comedy shows at Club Congress, okay. at Rialto, at wherever she can. She's doing a lot of comedy hmm. shows, open mic nights. Wow. You know, doing all that. I had no idea. And so I approached her and she was like, I got you. Yeah. And she 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 got a group of people. Wow. So they're of, all pretty much local? They're all local. Yeah, okay. Yeah. In the past I've had comedians come in from Phoenix. Okay. But 
this year is all local and wow. it was cool man yeah yeah i got that local vibe cool yeah had a i'll give them props ash loca morgan kuhn kenny shade Vizzy thick hmm okay they were funny. Yeah. They were really, really funny. We had a good time. So and did they do some like local comedy, you know, stuff that you would relate to? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Actually, all of them did. All of them did? Okay. All of them did. Yeah. It was it was pretty funny because, you know, they had that local feel. Yeah. They and, knew what was going on knew, around they, around town. Well, they know and, yeah. they, and they incorporated that in right. their in their uh comedy. Yeah. But they also knew my audience. Okay. And they knew <laughs> Tucson High Reunion, so to speak. Oh, okay. So they knew my audience, right? And or, or the West Side, yeah. You know, and uh, or Barrio Centro. Mm -hmm. You know, they all coming together and, sure. and supporting the comedy show. But they knew the audience, and uh, they they had some funny things to say. Yeah. You know, I'm not sure it's funnier than what I had to say. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, you know what goes, oh. Oh, oh, no. Santa walking backwards. <laughs> See, that's the kind of comedy I oh, Okay. Yeah, they're not funny. You're <laughs> laughing at me, you know? <laughs> but that's kind of my stick on it. Yeah. Just, just to make people laugh. You got laugh. some of those dad jokes. Yeah, it's all dad jokes, man. <laughs> that's all I tell is dad jokes. But it's, it's, it's just to make people gravitate to, to, to understand that, oh, Look at this fool. <laughs> Let's have fun with Steve, make fun of him, and then get the real guys up there. Sure. All and right. Everyone laughed their bellies off. We'll be back in just a couple minutes with Southwest Flavor. My heat and air were in a state of disrepair. My brains were clogged. I was really in despair. So I called some guy. You've never seen such a mess. And every time he leaned over, well, you can probably guess it. Hi, I'm Alan Murdoch. For the past 20 years, I've been buying, fixing, and selling properties right here in Southern Arizona. And I want to buy your property. Whether it's a house, apartment, commercial building, or vacant land, regardless of the condition or the situation, I want to talk to you. When you sell to me, I pay cash and it's hassle-free. No repairs, no closing costs, and no commissions. If you have a property you don't want to deal with and you want a quick solution, call, text, or visit SellTalon.com. Again, that's SellTalon.com. Discover the power of 88 Crime, where your anonymous tips are rewarded with cash. When you call in anonymously with a tip, you are given a code. With the code and a password, you can walk into a bank and redeem your reward anonymously. If your anonymous tip results in a felony arrest, you can claim up to $2,500 cash reward. Let's stop the silence on crime and strive for a safer community. For more information, please visit 88crime.org or call 88crime. Copper Creek Cookies, Copper Creek Cookies, Copper Creek Cookies.net. We can print anything on our soft vanilla logo cookies. We deliver them and other sweet treats locally. We are located at 4249 West Ina Road, Suite 121. Call us, 520-300-1131. We bake smiles. Copper Creek Cookies, Copper Creek Cookies, Copper Creek Cookies.net. All right, we are back with Southwest Flavor. Hey, if you haven't downloaded the app, go ahead and uh, download the Live the Dream, the LTD Media app on your Apple Store or your Google Store. Today we're talking with Steve Nunez, and we're talking about Tucson, just all kinds of different things, all Tucson. about Tucson, man. Yeah. So, you know, we were talking about my comedy show that I yeah. had. And um, so I'm kind of not myself today. Okay. You probably notice a little bit. I'm a little bit down. My girlfriend just dumped me. Oh yeah? Yeah. She um Yeah, she kinda dumped me and I was just I've been kind of a little bit bummed, you know, but I was watching a U of A uh -huh. basketball game. Right. And I'm just paying attention to the TV. But I can see through my peripheral vision. Her, she's just going all over the crazy uh -huh. place, just looking all over the place, under pillows, oh, yeah? kind of lifting my feet, everything. And I'm like, what's she doing? 
commercial break comes on, so then I actually pay attention to her. <laughs> <laughs> you know how that works, right? Right. right? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, ladies. Especially but during you, the game. Yeah, during the U of A basketball. Come, yeah. come on, do not interrupt. <laughs> so then she stops just looking around and then starts going back and forth in front of the TV. The game comes back on and she stops right in front of the TV. Uh oh. I'm like, oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> And I'm trying to, like, look at the game, and she's staring at me, puts her hands on her hips, and she's like, have you seen the dog bowl? I'm like, what? What? Game's on. (laughs) She's like, have you seen the dog bowl? And at that point, I was, like, staring back at her like, no, I have not seen the dog bowl. Uh. (laughs) (laughs) Ah. thing. Yeah, the... The young blood's back there running the board. They're, they're, they're not gonna shaking that. their head. They're, they're, yeah, they're not going to get that. They're not going to get that. Dog, bowl. Right. Yeah. Right. He doesn't have a thumb to put in the bowl, nah. in, the, in the ball, so. He's got a little paw. He's got the Boop. paw, yeah. I guess he could flick it but over there. that's a typical man <laughs> response. That's yeah. a dad response. That no, is. No, I did not see the dog bowl. <laughs> yeah, that's my comedy. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> sorry. But you know what? I guarantee you. Anyone watching or listening to this podcast, that's a joke you're going to tell on Thanksgiving at dinner. And there you go. Yep. <laughs> keeping it light at Thanksgiving. Keep, keep yeah. it light. Keep it real. Just having fun. Right. Right. Yeah. So uh, so what's your plans for Thanksgiving? It's you coming up here in a couple of days. Family, man. Good. Just take the day off. Yeah. I, I don't want to look at my phone okay. other than to check scores or whatever. <laughs> I, <laughs> text messages. Yeah. But, Take the day off. Good. Just enjoy my family. You know, um, it's going to be neat because we, we gather at my sister's house and my parents will be there. Okay. You know, when my parents get 83 and 82 years old, you just got to yeah. live the moment, man. Yeah. And appreciate the it, moment. It's a blessing to still it's have our parents. Blessing. It it's is. It's a blessing. And, and you realize that yeah. as you get older. Right. And that's what Thanksgiving really becomes. Yeah. A day to, to, to be grateful. Yeah. And fill your heart with gratitude to right. know that. You still have your loved ones with you. Yeah. That's what you got to do, man. Yeah, definitely. So that's, you know, football, turkey, lots of food. Right. Family. And family. Yeah. Yeah. Just spending that time with the family and enjoying them. Yep. And then Saturday, (laughs) my Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. Saturday is my Super Bowl, man. I hate ASU. (laughs) (laughs) And it's here this year. It's here this year, but, man, we're just not playing good, and I'm scared of that scatterboo, that running back for ASU, man. He's got some big thighs. Yeah, ASU looks good. ASU does look good, and I don't like it, though. No. It's not good. Not good for for us. Not good for us, but we are on a two-game winning streak. We did win last year. What was it? 59-23. Yeah. You know, well, last um, year was a magical year for football, for U of A football. It well, really was. It could be another magical year. Yeah. I don't care what our record is. Just, I mean, just I just grew up ASU. in Tucson, man. Yeah. You know, we weren't used to we had a winning, a, you know, except yeah. for a few. Yeah, yeah. But we had a streak under Dick Tomey. I think it was like yeah. 10 or 11 years yeah, that but, we beat ESU. But we didn't always have a winning record. No, that's true. And that's what this... Rivalry is all about. Yeah. It doesn't matter who has a winning record. Yeah. ASU can be nine and two, which they are. Yeah. And we're not. Right. We're four and six. Yeah. We can still beat them. Yeah. If we show up. Yeah. The keys to me is Fafita rolling out of the pocket. Yeah. He's too small to stay in the pocket. He can't see over. And every time he stays in the pocket, in many ways, he's always overthrowing. He's got to come out of that pocket right. and just hit T Mac on the run. Yeah. Give it to T Mac like they did last year. Yeah, Every they time can, but T-Mac, they got to get some of the other guys involved. You know what? Just give it to T Mac. <laughs> it's the last game. Let's just win. And yeah. if they stop him, then give it to someone else. All right. Until they stop him, yeah. don't stop. You That's know? true. I mean, if Let it's him working, just keep going. Of Let course, him then make ASU adjust. Yeah, we shouldn't be adjusting to them. Forget That's ASU, true. man. I honestly, I. This yeah. is my Super Bowl. <laughs> this is my Super Bowl. And then it's also basketball season, of and course, as we mentioned season, before. And that's why I wear this scarf. Yeah. I'm a big basketball fan. Yeah. But this is my good luck scarf. I call it my lucky Wildcat scarf. Okay. So I wear it at the start of basketball season. Yeah. All the way through, I do not take it off. Oh, wow. Until we lose in March Madness. Yeah. 
Now, hopefully we won't this year, but hopefully we won't. Yeah, we say that every year. But oh man, it, it's still exciting though. Oh, of course it's exciting. No, we, you, have a, you know, we have a great the, program. The, the, the scarf is it's my lucky scarf. You know, I call that, and that's part of you know whatever my branding. You know, as Steve Nunez, yeah. and just someone in the community, born and raised in Tucson. You know, just like I use your real home boy yeah. for my business right. as a loan officer. Yeah, tell home. us about your business. I will in a second. But okay. So this scarf, though, you know, I, 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 it, it means more than just being a lucky scarf. That's part of the, ha, 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 ha. Yeah. You know, um, the real meaning is it, it, it's a reminder to me okay. to keep me humble. Ah, and it's okay. a reminder to me to keep fighting every day yeah. like I did to get to the U of A. Right. To get to the point where I would graduate and achieve my goals and dreams. Right. You know, to get to the point where I was told I would never, ever leave, you know, be able to graduate from high school, mm. much less go to U of A. Yeah. Um, and it started at Tucson High, too. Right. Me and my mom went up to ask our counselor, my counselor, mm -hmm. how to file for financial aid. We walked out of there with my mom crying because he told me, good luck working construction. He didn't oh, give wow. me a chance. Yeah. So this scarf represents I overcame that. Okay. This scarf represents I was told I'd never be on TV. Yeah. And I was. Right. I worked on it. Was that always your dream? That was always my dream. Yeah. When I was eight years old. Okay. I be it, it became my dream to be a sports anchor. Okay. A sportscaster. Yeah. And uh, I did a little bit of sports, but I was pushed. My first job, I, I was anchoring sports, oh, but then okay. I was pushed into news. They thought I was better at news, okay. and, and they, they were like, you're going to be good at news. You're, you're, mm. you're smart. Yeah. I'm like, hell yeah, I'm smart, man. <laughs> 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 don't, let, don't let my little mustache or <laughs> my Jerry Curl. <laughs> Back in the 80s, remember the Michael yeah. Jackson? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Phenomenon where everybody was trying to be Michael Jackson or Prince. Yeah. Yeah, I was one of them. <laughs> but, you know, and so that's what this scarf represents. Okay. It reminds me every day. But I use it for basketball because basketball actually inspired me to, you know, I used to sneak into the games when I was a kid. Oh, really? At Mikel Center. Yeah. You know, and, you know, back then they had the pullout bleachers. Oh, wow. Yeah. So we would hide in the bleachers. <laughs> and when they start to pull them out by sections, we'd run ah. to the section where they weren't pulling out yet. And okay. then we'd run into the tunnels. And, you know, Mikel Center back there underneath. Right. It's a maze of yeah, tunnels. Yeah, there's a lot of tunnels back there. You know, and ramps and all that. So we run back there and hide, go to the restroom. The game would start. We come out and just go sit up at the very top. <laughs> and and it wasn't that experience that motivated me. Mm -hmm. It was just being on campus okay. that allowed me to start to dream yeah. that I can come to school here. And that's what that did for me. And that's why I'm a big proponent of, you know, with Miracle, giving kids um, an opportunity to get to the U of A yeah. by just exposing them, like with the Arizona Bowl. Mm -hmm. Get them to be on campus so they can see, wow, I can do this. Yeah. I can be here. Yeah. Because that goes a long way in teaching them or giving them that hope. Yeah. Because then they feel they belong. But I want to nurture that dream because it was nurtured in me by just being on campus. Right. Then I realized, you know what? I want to do this. I want to come to the U of A. Yeah. I can do it. I don't care what anybody says. So that's what this represents to okay. me, more so than just the lucky Wildcats. Yeah. <laughs> because it was only lucky in 97 for me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I'll take it. I'll always live the rest of my life. 97, yeah. baby. 97. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. It was 30 years ago. It's 97. We're still champs. You know, that's so. amazing. That is almost 30 years ago. I know. It doesn't seem like it. It does not seem like it. So no. we're due. Yeah, we, we are, are due. And I think this team could have a run in it. They have the talent. They definitely they, have the talent. They just need to put it together. They, they do. Yeah. And that's why, going back to what we were talking about, I don't like the fact that the scheduling yeah. only just has a week. One, one game a week. Yeah. You can see it in Wisconsin and in Duke. Yeah. There was no in the continuity or no the, continuity, yeah. no 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 camaraderie that was you know, they just seemed off sync. Yeah. And it's because they haven't been playing. Yeah. 
you know, before there's a bunch they, of players out there, but they're not yeah. a team. They're not yet. a team. Yeah. Now. But I think when they do become a team, yeah. watch out. Yeah. They, they can be, they can be good. Yeah. Well, they left for the Bahamas yesterday yeah. and they're playing tomorrow, I believe in the Bahamas. Yeah, so Davidson. maybe that will, they'll jail them. Maybe. Yeah. It's the Bahamas. Yeah. It is a <laughs> lot of mamas yeah. in the Bahamas, <laughs> but they have to travel and they're staying together. And yeah, let's just hope they focus. Hope. Yeah. Yeah, Definitely. let's hope the mamas don't come out <laughs> in the Bahamas so they can focus and yeah. beat Davidson. Yeah, you know, and just start to build that chemistry, start to build that camaraderie, and really, you know, the the good news is that it is, you know, out of the country and all. Yeah, so they, it's away they, from everyone. They, they start to build that camaraderie because yeah. they're traveling together, right? Just like you know, they do every you know in the summers when they go mm-hmm. to when they do Europe the trip or yeah. somewhere out, out out you know elsewhere. They they start to bond and everything. Yeah, they didn't have that this year, and yeah. I think that that's hurting them early on in the season. But we'll see. Yeah, Come, but we'll, we'll put man, it together. We got a tough schedule. We got yeah, Baylor, we Iowa State, yeah. Kansas, Kansas State. Yeah, that's West just Big Virginia. Twelve. Yeah. That's just Big Twelve. Mm-hmm. Houston. Yeah, you know, there's there's four four uh, Big Twelve teams yeah. ranked and ahead I, of Arizona. Man, we. Mm. Yeah, if we win against Davidson, I believe that there's a possibility we'll play Indiana over there in the Bahamas, and they'll play yeah. against Paulo. Yeah, so that would be interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, man, too bad he left. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, I you get know, it too. I understand. And he was a good kid the whole time he was but here. But he was, he was, he was great, great yeah. kid. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Nothing, nothing against him. No, you know, players come and go. Well, nil. Yeah, you know, it's it's. But at some point, they got to put a cap on it. Yeah. It's getting out of control. It is out of control. I saw, what did I read the other day? Uh, High school player hasn't even proven himself at the college level. And he's going to, I want to say Alabama or Georgia. Mm, So one of the SEC $10 million a year. Wow. I'm like, what? Unbelievable. That that is. That's out of control. Yeah. 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 If I'm, I could play, if I could get paid that much, I might come out of retirement <laughs> and start start putting on my Michael Jordan, sh- uh, <laughs> right? You know, my Air Jordans from back in the eighties, and, yeah. and start balling again. Yeah, I'll man. give them one goal line <laughs> run. <laughs> <laughs> man, I'm just good for one three pointer. Yeah, <laughs> but it could be the winning one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pay me ten million, I'll do it. Man, it, it's it's amazing where all this money just comes from. It it just seems like. You know, there's so much money out there for things like that, for high school kids to, you know, take the next step to go play college football or basketball. Yeah, it it can be, it's an eye opener and it can be, you know, like, good, finally, these kids are, are getting paid. And you look at the NCAA and all the BS that they really yeah. pulled the wool over everyone's eyes after all these years right. of claiming, you know, these kids can't, you, you know, I mean, a coach, they go under violation or, yeah. or sanction because a coach would feed a kid pizza yeah. because they're hungry. Yeah. But look at all that money. All of a sudden, yeah. NIL that comes money, they, they were it, exposed. It there. They're exposed. Yeah. Well, because they, a lot of people had fat wallets, Yeah. you know, and they didn't want to let go of that. And they used the, oh, it's about an education. It's never been about an education. It's yeah. always been about sports first, making money for the university. Oh, and by the way, you can get an education. <laughs> yeah. So don't lie, you yeah. know? And now we're seeing that. We're seeing the truth. Yeah. And so I'm all for these kids getting paid whatever they're worth. Yeah. But I feel like you have to earn it. Yeah. You should not come out of high school and be getting $10 million yeah. without earning it. Right. You have to earn it. And then at some point, there's got to be a cap. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like because then it's not really college sports anymore. Yeah, it's it. it you can see that it's going to ruin college yeah. sports. Yeah, it's not going to be competitive. And there's going to be a couple. Yeah, haves and there's going to be a lot of have nots. There's going to be a lot of have nots. Yeah, because who can pay some of these players if they're making that much money? Right, somewhere. You know, yeah. then you're going to see the stupid Ohio States, <laughs> <laughs> Georgias, yeah. Alabamas. Yeah, they're going to win every year, man. Yeah, and yeah, what they, chance does? My Arizona Wildcats have. Right. Not much. Yeah. You know, and that includes basketball. Yeah. You know, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough to keep some of these players or to even get them here. Yeah. You know, and I don't want to see that. I want to see the game still be 
pure as pure as it can be right you know under the circum- circumstances and all in other today's climate with with the NIL but man I just hope Arizona goes on a run. Yeah. It's going to be tough, though. I, I think they will. But, yeah, they're definitely in a, in a more competitive conference. Oh, the, the Big 12 yeah. is so much more competitive than the Pac-12. But the good news is that good competition come March is yeah. going to have Arizona better prepared oh, yeah. than any other time. Yep. Because when Arizona went in the Pac-12, went on, on, a, on a away trip, yeah. and they played Thursday, Saturday, they could take a Thursday off. And yeah. maybe, you know, um, then have to play on Saturday right. a great opponent like Oregon. Yeah. You know, or take a Thursday off, you know, and play what, Oregon State and then Oregon or whatever. Yeah. You know, there was always, it, it wasn't like back to back games where they were so competitive. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it was always maybe one game. Mm-hmm. Now, no. Yeah. I mean, they're going to really have. Right, have to play every week and yeah. play a tough opponent, which yeah. is I think is going to make them tougher. It will make them tougher and, yeah. and and more physical, yeah, and better prepared for March when we're really under the spotlight. Yeah, and you know how March Madness is. Oh yeah, everyone has an equal chance. That's right. Yeah, you, you kind know, of just start over in March. You start all yep. over, and whoever gets hot, like we did in '97. Yeah. You know, whoever gets hot and goes on a run yeah. is a team that's going to win it all. That's right. And once they once they get hot and they go on that run, there's no stopping them. Yeah. And that's that's what I'm hoping for. Yeah. You know, because Kansas, Houston, Baylor, even Texas Tech, man, Kansas State, West Virginia, yeah, Iowa State, Iowa State, and they're ranked number five right now. Yeah. I think it is. You know, God, the competition is ridiculous. It's yeah. going to be awesome, though. Yeah, it will. Well, thank you so much, Steve, for joining us. Oh, we're done? We are done. It's, oh, it's 10 serious? o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, thank you. I, I really appreciate you. Keep up the great work. Well, thank you. You too. Keep doing what you're doing and keep supporting the community with, with your platform, you know, in your business. And happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. Yep. And I appreciate you having me here. Much love, brother. I appreciate you. And thank you. Happy uh, Thanksgiving. Go Wildcats, baby. All right. Go Wildcats. Happy Thanksgiving. Some Southwest flavor. We'll see you next week.